Did you know that solar energy is the largest source of energy received by Earth? Imagine this, the sun is like a giant nuclear plant that produces so much energy that it can that its surface temperature goes all the way up to 5700 degrees Celsius. In today's episode, we're going to learn a lot more about solar energy and a little more about the careers that students can explore in this space. Joining me today is Ravi Kumar, the co-founder and CEO of Dexler Energy. Thank you for joining us, Ravi. Thank you, Amit. Thank you so much. Very glad to be here. Uh, happy to Great. speak about it. Fantastic. Thank you so much for making time in your schedule. Really appreciate it. Uh, before we begin, I'm going to, you know, just quickly uh, give a small introduction, uh, you know, so a little, bar, a little bit about you. I'd love to st tell students a little bit more about you, Ravi. So and as I understand, you know, you've, you've been a subject matter expert, you're a TEDx speaker, you were working with PricewaterhouseCoopers uh, for a long time, close to 10 years, where you were working their energy, utilities and mining practice, where you were advising utilities, regulators, investors and private players in the power sector. You've also worked with companies like um, Elia Agrotech and Pice. I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly. And uh, you then went on to found uh, Dexler Energy, uh, you know, where you've been focusing on solar energy. So tell us a little bit about your journey, Ravi. You know, what, what prompted you to uh, really start a company that's focused on solar? Well, thanks for that great introduction. Uh, I started my uh, career way back uh, when the electricity reforms were happening in the country. Uh, at, at that point in time, I had no idea about uh, uh, the fact that I'll end up here. Mm. It was uh, very early days uh, for the electricity sector in the country and we were hugely dependent on fossil fuels in those days. Uh, uh, the main focus areas were in fact uh, reforms in the electricity sector. Uh, so there was no focus on generation as such or what kind of generation we are going to focus on. Uh, our as a country, our our needs were different at that point in time. But as we grew, I I have also seen the transition from uh, the fact that you know we were predominantly coal based to uh, there was focus on hydro large doing large hydro plants to right. Then slowly we started seeing wind. And then we slowly slowly started seeing solar. Fortunately for me, I've been uh, exposed to all of these technologies. I've had the opportunity to work with players across the spectrum of uh, you know uh, generation or the technologies uh, that are involved in these uh, different kinds of uh, generation and and i've had uh, through while going through this journey i i, I found that the technologies that uh, i was working later on in my years at pwc were uh, the wind uh, hydro and solar was so much more cleaner and so much more uh, environmentally friendly and mm -hmm. I didn't see the need for us to continue to uh, do so much of uh, coal-based energy. You know, because globally also, we've started seeing around the same time, there is a shift towards greener sources of fuel, greener sources of energy uh, of, for meeting the electricity needs or energy needs of different countries. And I, I thought that if, if it is possible for Germany to do it, uh, why is it not possible for India to do it? At the time, Germany was at the forefront of solar revolution. And we right. a lot of solar... Uh, uh, megawatts and megawatts of solar and we were still talking about small size systems where you know kilowatts one megawatt or very small capacities that we were talking about i think i i kind of gradually fell in love there is no aha moment there was no like one single moment where i can romantically talk about but uh, over the period of time i i kind of enjoyed the transition i enjoyed the fact that these technologies are so much more uh, cost effective so much more uh, beneficial uh, to the overall uh, uh, system right so, as people, as human, as a race, that we can benefit from these uh, technologies. And uh, thankfully, around the same time when I was working at PwC, when I was uh, kind of growing fond of these technologies, is when um, I, you know, met my other co-founder Anand, and we kind of hit it off. And we liked uh, uh, the idea that you know renewables can be the future and can play a huge role in terms of uh, you know, how we will consume our electricity going forward. And since then. Uh, we've had this idea to do something in the space. We kind of had lots, lots of interactions around it, and kind of hit upon this idea to get into this kind of business. And voila, and I'm here. That's fantastic, you know. And I, I think it's amazing because you're actually helping uh, companies 
uh, you know, as I understand, Dexter focuses more on commercial deployments, right? So you have uh, players in this space that are focusing more on the residential side. There are players focusing more on commercial. And as I can imagine, deployments in on the commercial side are larger. They're more intense. Uh, you know, I think uh, it's, it's, it's really important to get all the pieces right when it comes to commercial deployments. But it's really interesting for, for a company uh, or any entity for that matter to become a contributor to the power grid rather than being a, a consumer, right? So that's amazing that you power your own needs, but you also contribute. So do you see that happening uh, in the case of your customers? Yeah, in, indeed. In, in cases where uh, we are setting it up on top of their roofs, there are instances where uh, they, they, they consume and there's still some excess that is being generated during a particular point in time and goes back into the grid. Uh, uh, even otherwise, there's a concept the the um, the model in which we are working are to set the distributed projects. Right, we are not trying to do large projects in one single location. We are trying to do smaller projects across multiple locations, whether it's okay. on roof or on ground. So when we are trying to distribute the uh, generation capacities closer to consumption points, it in fact benefits the network. There is okay. a there is a need. There is a kind of an avoided cost. Uh, in in terms of building infrastructure to carry an electron from say a very far place from somewhere in the state to uh, say the metro, right? Makes whether, sense. Whether it is Bombay or whether it is Bangalore, you don't have to carry an electron from all the way from you know one far corner of the state to uh, Bombay, right? So similarly, um, when we are doing distributed, it gets consumed locally wherever there is consumption, it gets lo consumed locally. Mm -hmm. That way, uh, it is beneficial to the grid as well. And like you said, there are instances where they pump back into the grid and it contributes to the grid's uh, efficiency. I like that concept that you talked about, you know, this distributed model where the deployment is happening closer to the point of consumption. So in that sense, uh, firstly, you're working with a sustainable energy source, but you're also doing it in a very sustainable way because by by keeping the, you know, collation of that energy and consumption of that energy close to each other, you know, it's more efficient. The system is more efficient, and it is also beneficial, you know, from from for the environment. So that's that's nice. I really like what I'm hearing. Thank you, thank you, man. Uh, I also wanted to ask you, Ravi. You know, in terms of what are some of the latest innovations and trends that you're seeing in solar manufacturing? Uh, it's just a bit of context before I jump into the specifics of solar sure. manufacturing. There's a lot of action that is happening in this space today, uh, because. Uh, India wanted to uh, encourage more domestic manufacturing companies. Right. We were, we were, were until uh, recent times, we were predominantly dependent on the Chinese uh, to supply uh, solar-related, uh, you know, equipment to us. Now, with this particular, there are a bunch of initiatives that the government has come up with, which are, some of them are non-tariff and tariff barriers, tariff-based barriers which is now encouraging domestic manufacturing to, in fact, double down on manufacturing in the country, which is a great positive sign for us because we have always uh, uh, depended externally for uh, getting this. And the fact that we are looking at doing so much solar in the country uh, and not having to depend on the equipment that are related to doing solar plants uh, and having them manufactured locally will help us to be self-sustainable in terms of doing this, right? I, that's a great, great positive sign. Absolutely. On that note, on that note, what I would like to say is that because we are doing so much manufacturing, uh, there are a lot of new technologies that are coming. So until if you had asked me the same question about two years ago, probably my answer would have been, you know what, we are, we are not there in terms of manufacturing. We are not doing anything exciting. We are, we are doing a very, very small amount of capacities were there at the time. Now it has increased significantly and there are more that are coming online. Uh, there are technologies like uh, monoperk that are catching up in terms of solar module. There are technologies like bifacial uh, where we, um, where you can, uh, where, where it can capture light from both sides of the panel instead of just right. one side. There are, uh, mm, there are technologies uh, which are essentially bringing in higher efficiency onto the, there are technologies like Topcon. And there are technologies like HJT. I don't want to get too technical about it, but essentially they are improving the efficiency. So it's like this, right? In the same area, 
or in the same square feet of area, you are trying to capture as much sun as possible and sure. convert that into as much electricity as possible. So sure. we, we are trying to pack in more power. We are trying to pack in more efficiency into the same area so that we can continue to generate more. Right. So there are a lot of developments that are coming in and every year it is changing. Now it has become more dynamic in the last two, three years that every year the scene is changing, which augurs well for us uh, because uh, we are right at that uh, particular stage where new, we are setting up new manufacturing capacities so we can do that with newer technologies. Nice, that's good to hear. You know, and you know, in the solar space, I can imagine that there's some uh, innovation happening in terms of the material of the panels. As you mentioned, the bifacial panels, that's so nice to hear. Uh, and it's also, I, I, I would think that some of these innovations relate to how the energy is stored, how it is transmitted over the last mile. As much as you can minimize the loss there, uh, you're actually re reaching a higher net output, right? And I think that's, uh, it's a holistic perspective. It's not just in one angle, it's in multiple perspectives that, you know, be innovations and some, you know, uh, developments may be happening. So that that's nice to hear. So uh, obviously this has made solar panels more efficient. It's increased, uh, as you mentioned, the amount of output that's generated per square foot, right? Or the square space that's available. Now, uh, compared to say, you know, uh, some of the deployments that we see on the fossil fuel side, you have large factories, uh, hydro projects also are really large, you know. Solar panels today in India, would you say that they have a small footprint uh, do you see, you know, uh, a significant increase in the years to come? Uh, well, what's your comment there? See, uh, I, I keep telling this to some of the younger uh, people that I keep meeting and having a chat with, is that the beauty of solar is that India is blessed, blessed with abundant sunshine. Absolutely. Out of 365 days, most locations in the country can claim to at least 330 days of sun, which means that 99% of your year is blessed with sun. Your location is blessed with sun. So then what happens, what it comes down to is that you finding the right equipment, putting it together, pointing the panel in the right direction. That's it. If you can do this, then you can start generating electricity. Now, with compared that to some of the other technologies, right? So you see wind. Wind requires immense amount of study to understand the patterns of wind, that location, whether it is going to capture more wind, less wind, what are the cutting speeds, what is the height at which you need to set up the turbine. You do this analysis, uh, all this data, you do different kinds of assessment, capture this data. You have to spend at least 12 to 18 months before you start the project to be able to decide whether you want to do a project there or not, right? Uh, right. Compare that with large hydro. Large hydro requires a huge amount of hydrological data, a huge amount of geological studies to see whether you're drilling in the right place, whether you know there is a chance of a collapse, whether there is a downstream, you know, livelihoods that are getting affected. Correct. And what happens to the flora fauna? All of these come into equation. So nothing less than 24 months, you'll be able to do a hydro project. Now compare that with solar. I'm like, there's nothing that you need. You just, you just need to go buy the equipment from the market. You need to have the right kind of technicians with you. Put it all together. See, no offense to the design engineering involved. No offense to the kind of technicality sure. involved, right? But relatively, the pace at which you can put up a solar panel and the kind of ease with which you can do that is much, much higher. So I believe that solar will be at the forefront of any and all kinds of electricity generation going forward. That, that's that, that, that's that's a given I mean. in your mind. Yeah, absolutely. absolutely. And makes sense the way you're explaining it. So, uh, sorry, there was uh, there was another question that you've asked. Uh, in terms of like, you know, do you see that footprint expanding? Do you see the uh, indeed, total indeed. wattage uh, that we generate from solar today as a contribution to the overall energy, kanda, you know, a generation in India? Uh, what, what kind of mix could we see going forward? I mean, as you said, we're, we're ab Absolutely. abundantly blessed with good sunshine. Yeah, so in India. Yes. It will increase dramatically. The government uh, themselves have made an announcement of doing about 500 gigawatts of renewables. Awesome. Of which 280 gigawatts is coming from solar. So for uh, just context, gigawatt is 10,000 megawatts. So That's we are right. talking about 240,000 megawatts of solar coming in in the future, right? So we are talking about looking at at least 100 gigawatts of deployments every year. That's the kind of pace at which we want to grow. Um, uh, the 
the footprint so if you are asking me about geological footprint uh, i don't have the reference math in terms of what this is going to be but in terms of energy mix like you rightly pointed out there will be an increased amount of solar uh, that will definitely contribute towards our energy mix we have a long way to go because even today about 70% 65 to 70% of our electricity comes from uh, fossil fuels right so that needs to change and and it will change over the future uh you know next few years and i'm very very sure solar will be uh, playing a major major role in that in in terms of what you're outlining i'm really happy to hear what you're saying because you're saying that from the projection that the government has made they close to 50% of that capacity they're anticipating to come from solar and it only goes to show the kind of uh, commitment that the government is willing to put in terms of resources in terms of policies in terms of uh, you know even procedural clearances for solar deployments to happen and another good point that you made was that um, actually the go to market time frame for solar projects is so much simpler so much uh, shorter and actually it it has uh, you know little or no impact on flora and fauna you're just setting up panels in the right space you have the right level of technical expertise to point in the right direction and voila you can start generating power so that's that's really really awesome uh, i mean you know when you look at india as as uh, you know you can look at the world from different lenses right from different perspectives and from the perspective of someone who's deploying solar energy you can see the entire market and say hey the whole the whole field is available for us to go out there and uh, do deployments you know so that's uh, it's amazing uh, to actually hear you say that and to also kind of learn from you about that so um are you as 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 uh, someone who's in the industry do you think the government is doing enough uh, to encourage the adoption and deployment of solar energy or do you think more can be done in this space the uh, the good thing with solar is that um economically it has become much more accessible than it was say a few years ago right uh, 10 years ago it used to be very very expensive uh, to set up a solar plant uh the only other analogy that i can think of were those big mobiles that we used to get uh they used to be very thick and heavy uh, in those early days of the telephone revolution and mobile revolution and they used to cost a lot each call used to be some 15 bucks or 16 bucks. 16 rupees 16 rupees a minute i was in telecom solar, yeah six <laughs> 16 rupees it used to be right that's right uh, so uh, so it's it's a bit like it was a bit like that for solar but now it has become very very accessible people are quoting 2 and a half rupees 3 rupees uh, for large capacities large deployments wow. they are quoting about 2 and a half 3 rupees as power cost right so and and typically we in our homes we are paying today at 4 and a half bucks 4 and a half 5 bucks at least and particularly in metros in in places where you live it will be higher 7 8 9 rupees absolutely and commercial in that will are even higher so Correct. it is it is just a no brainer for for someone who understands the math behind it uh, while it like from a capital deployment perspective it is still not uh, i would say glamorous enough for, for people to look at it as individuals right uh, but corporates have realized it corporates are doing it in a big way uh, utilities are anyways doing it, right so i think it needs to pick up a little bit more uh, uh, the only thing that i would uh, 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 in an ideal world what i would have liked is much sure. more uh, coordination between the state and center right on 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 the elements of regulatory and policy for electricity but clearly in solar uh there's a lot that can happen between the state and center and right now there is a you know it's asynchronous and it's kind of adding friction to the growth right if that can be addressed then we can have much more accelerated pace of adoption absolutely and and i think it's just a matter of time you know uh, as the deployments increase i'm sure industry will again put pressure on government to you know simplify this and uh, yeah so the 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 thing about central and state government coordination that's that's really uh, uh, something that no one can really guess how well that's going to happen but but let's hope for the sake of the solar energy industry it does happen sooner than not yeah. okay i i wanted to ask you ravi you know uh, there are a lot of students out there who may be looking at you know building a career uh, in the solar energy industry could you perhaps uh, outline some of the kind of jobs and roles that students can explore sure see uh 
one good thing with solar one good thing with renewables uh, um, in at large and uh, particularly in solar is that the amount of capacity that is getting added uh, uh, purely from from energy generation point of view um uh, there was some study that uh, i was looking at which says that it could add potentially about 1 million jobs in the next wow, wow. um and and this doesn't include uh, manufacturing right manufacturing alone again can potentially every 10 gigawatt can potentially generate about 10000 jobs so we are looking at reaching about 100 gigawatts of capacity closer to 100 gigawatts of capacity uh which will in fact be, may, make us a net exporter uh, rather than a consumer uh, of of solar panels and solar uh, related equipment i think that augurs well from 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 a job employment perspective yeah yeah absolutely there is a high amount of uh, uh, requirement even today as we speak uh, for engineers uh, electrical engineers civil engineers and um, and and uh, people who are skilled right it diplomas people who semi skilled uh, who can who can function at uh, a plant level to manage the construction to manage the operation maintenance of the plants uh, so the the ones that are highly in demand i would say if 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 we were to break the split of 1 lakh or sorry 1 million uh, about 40 to 50% will be semi skilled to uh, you know technician kind of roles uh, which will require um uh, basic understanding of engineering electrical aspects uh, offered um, and about another 20% would be in design aspects right which means that they need sure. to understand um cad they need to understand have the understanding of these tools building systems on using these tools right uh design engineering uh, subjects and then followed by business development followed by uh operation and maintenance aspects followed by project management right all of these are uh, potential areas uh, for uh, uh jobs i think uh, uh this doesn't include anything to do with right indirect jobs that are created like which are uh, which are uh, because uh, you know whether it is financing whether it is transportation whether it is logistics of these equipment uh, whether it is storage uh, warehousing distribution uh, whether it is uh, you know uh, third party assessments third party uh, research labs or uh, testing labs i am not considering any of this i am primarily looking at uh, direct employment from full time employment from building these capacities um in addition like i said the manufacturing capacities will create jobs there will be indirect jobs uh, like i said uh, in the in the manufacturing side as well there will be a lot of retailing that will be happening so sure. uh, there will be a lot of distributors who will come in uh, there will be a lot of smaller installers to residential projects who will come in uh, all of these are not considered in this i am I'm, i am very hopeful and i believe that there is a huge future across the entire value chain to accommodate so many more uh, you know people that's that's really nice to hear and uh, for a student out there i'm sure they're feeling uh, you know very nice when they hear stuff like this because it it really goes to show that this is an industry with tremendous growth potential with tremendous potential to employ new people across different levels and uh, you you did a good job in terms of outlining the different kind of departments or or roles that they could you know uh, do within the the larger solar space uh i wanted to ask you you know uh, are there any tips that you can share with aspiring professionals you know they want to land a job in this industry uh what can they do to actually enter and then progress uh, in their career in this space specifically yeah i think for technical rules uh, uh you just need to uh, have the uh, fundamentals right uh, to begin with you know you are engineering whatever you start the electrical engineering or whether it is civil engineering if you have understand the basics of it uh, even to a certain extent and mechanical uh, engineers are required here and the fundamentals are very important for the semi skilled and the uh, technical roles uh, but if you want to be on the design engineering side or if you want to be on the project management side obviously there will be some more uh, uh, skills that you need to gather you need to understand the design of systems you need to understand what goes into it there are a lot of the good thing is the skill i think uh, the there is a skill development institute uh, which is uh, which is set up for solar they're doing a lot of uh, a lot of trainings for uh, people who want to get into solar uh, and these are very small uh, training and they give a certificate and it's coming from the 
uh, from the uh, uh, from the entity which is run by the nodal agency which is run by the government and uh, that is a great starting point uh, sure for someone who's 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 wanting to get into more you know high level of engineering high level of uh, 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 skill set uh, which is required for uh, design engineering complex projects uh, they will need to obviously um, gain a little bit of hands on experience uh, work with uh, smaller systems find internships find work with some of these smaller developers and then uh, move up a little bit. Uh, they can work with consulting agencies. They can work with the third party audit agencies. Any of these could be a great starting point before they can come into the actual construction, actual building uh, space. Um, then uh, project management, you need to do the PMPs and uh, whatever professional uh, certifications that are required to become a uh, full-time project manager. Now, business development, again, sales skills are very important. Uh, um particularly if you are if you are into product sales you are into um solution selling or consultating consultative selling i think that is a, that is a great start for people to look at uh, uh you know players in this space um uh, then apply for players in this space uh this is broadly what i can think of immediately um no but uh, thanks smaller, thanks smaller, for yeah. go ahead please go ahead no, there are smaller roles which which will not which are not exactly uh, this intensive, which is like O and M or you know operational maintenance requires sure. uh, semi skilled uh, uh, you know people resources and uh, we don't need high intensive kind of people. They can they can be basic IT diplomas who understand you know nature of um, electrical systems and they can be employed in fact even as a fresher recruits uh, with uh, less experience to come and manage the operate and maintain the system. Okay, all right. Uh, so as I was saying, thanks for that. I mean, you know, um, the more I listen to you, the more I, I realize that um, there's a lot of potential uh, for for employment, for growth. And uh, I'm sure students out there who are going to be listening to this podcast are, are going to really appreciate what you've shared today. So thanks once again, Raveer. I've really enjoyed uh, this conversation. Uh, it's It's been a, a, a big learning curve for me as well. I knew a little bit about the soul energy before entering this conversation, but I'm emerging a lot richer and I am looking forward to stepping out in the sun. <laughs> so uh, thank, thanks for this, Ravi. Awesome. Really, really appreciate your time. Uh, thank you so much, thank Amit. You. It's been a pleasure. I hope uh, whatever I shared was helpful for the students. Uh, and I really look, look forward to a lot of people joining the solar sector and making a change. I'm sure, I'm sure. And and many people, a lot of those people would, you know, also be motivated after listening to this podcast. So thank you for, for doing this. You know, it's, it's it's really nice of you to make time. And, uh, you know, this was a really nice, good, engaging conversation. So thanks for that, Ravi. Thank you, Amit. Thank you for inviting me. Thanks a lot. I hope you enjoyed this, uh, this lovely chat that we had with Mr. Ravi Kumar. Um, we're going to keep churning content like this. So... Subscribe to us on YouTube and of course you can catch the audio version of this podcast on Google, Apple and Spotify. Our handle is the Zista Podcast. Till we meet again, we'd say stay curious. Stay curious.